Hello everyone, I am the Lore Explorer, and this video will contain spoilers for Outer Wilds, Echoes of the Eye. In today's loop, we will be talking about what's called the Party House, and what's going on inside. It's probably a relatively early encounter for most players, so it should be fun to try to add some context to it. And you're likely drawn to this cabin because of the creepy music emitting from the dark forest. And following the sound, we learn that it's pretty well hidden. The house is pretty hard to find. The only entrance is through a small dark tunnel, but luckily we find a steady stream of inhabitants making their way through the dark forest directly to this tunnel. Braving our way through the tunnels leads us to a pretty picturesque cabin along the river, and hiding on the outcrop just outside of this building, we can watch as inhabitant after inhabitant enter. By our count, there has to be at least four or five in there, and who knows how many entered before we got here. It's obvious no sane being would ever enter. But luckily, we're the hatchling. Our disregard for life is threefold. Firstly, we're a Harthian. Our forebearers of space flight flew to space with little more than a barrel, duct tape, and a dream. Secondly, we're already doomed to a near infinite series of deaths via time loop, and everything we do will be reverted anyway. And last but not least, we're currently inside a simulation. If we die here, we simply wake up in the real world at this point. So what do we have to lose? And sure enough, as soon as we enter the building, the music immediately cuts and the door closes behind us. The entire building is full of inhabitants, and one stands in front of the flock, and the rest of them surround their leader on multiple floors, just kind of staring blankly, either at their leader or into the fire itself. The inhabitants sort of then wait for us to make a further move before they descend on us and just kind of deload us. And sadly, this is just about as much information we can get about this scene. Before they do whatever they were going to do here, the dam in the real world breaks and the river overflows and floods the tower the inhabitants here were all connected to. So the flood outside deloads them all. And we're sort of left to our own devices to try to figure out what it was they were doing here. And I find this very interesting because we find nothing else like this in the DLC. To be completely honest, I had no idea what they could have been doing until pretty recently when I was revisiting some of the concepts. Then it just hit me. It's entirely possible, maybe even likely, that these inhabitants were having some sort of ceremony before going to the forbidden archives hidden below. Because you have to remember, the fireplace and the glitches in the simulation aren't actually common knowledge. The entrance to the Forbidden Archive in the Shrouded Woodlands is hidden pretty well with the tunnel and the false fire, but it just so happens that the leader of this party has had everyone gather here. So it actually would make a bit of sense if the inhabitants here actually knew that piece of information and were going to enter the fire. If not, it would be one heck of a coincidence, and it would make sense for them to perform this ceremony as well. This really would be something special to them. They wouldn't enter the archives every day or even have common access or permission to enter it on any given day. They're forbidden. The devs have said the forbidden archives are only forbidden to the outsiders. The inhabitants themselves were not supposed to be allowed to enter the archives. In fact, the entire simulation was kind of designed to hide this information or at least alter to do so. And actually, they go so far as to deload some inhabitants from the sim if they try to enter. When we catch one of the inhabitants in the hotel area watching a reel from their past, they turn off the projector as fast as they can, as if they were a child who got caught watching something they weren't supposed to. All of the shelves in the simulation that once held the reels have been emptied, and they built all of the deterrence features that we find. The sentries, the hidden pathways, and, and just how all of them are in hidden paths or places that you can't find. And remember, the inhabitants in the stranger were hidden to begin with. They had no real reason to expect us to ever find the stranger, let alone enter the simulation. They were reacting and doing all of this as if they were hiding it from the inhabitants, not us. They were so scared of the eye and its implications that they went to great lengths to hide and erase this from their memories. But I have to imagine that at least a small number of inhabitants didn't want to forget all of the things they held dear. They all pretty much condemned the prisoner for their actions, but the prisoner went way overboard by releasing the eye's signal. That shouldn't mean they have to forget everything, like literally reality itself is a thing. They'd want to remember the lazy rivers, the stunning dragonflies, and the adorable pupper bunnies who grazed on the grass. They'd want to remember that the simulation is just that, a simulation. 
and the only way to do that after so much time would definitely be seeing the videos they recorded and experiencing for themselves what's left of the real world. This is probably why all of the defenses surrounding the prisoner and the archives were constructed to begin with. Some of the inhabitants would go and watch these reels, and even having others going to watch them would remind the group that wanted to forget what were in them, and the fact that they even existed to begin with. So eventually, they were probably forced to get rid of the libraries and projector screens in the sim, as well as construct ways to make it so no one can find the archives and even dub them forbidden. They sort of went all out in doing so. They constructed centuries, I mean all of this I mentioned earlier. So you can see, keeping the archives secret were as serious as life and death to the inhabitants. But really, in this one case, the only thing protecting the archives is the fact that it's hiding through a tunnel and behind an entryway to a false fire pit. When we find it, we have to contend with the inhabitants here ourselves, but the Shrouded Woodlands entrance is a stark drastic difference from the other areas. They don't have light sentries, it's not hidden by secret hidden switches or pathways, other than, you know, just physically hidden, not hidden by light switches or anything. And they don't have any, you know, loud sentries that would wake anybody up, none of it. So although in the other areas they defend their archives entrances, even from each other at all costs, they seem to do the opposite here, where they're actually all gathering and meeting and in fact actually kind of throwing a party. So no matter how we look at it, this would be the best place for the inhabitants to actually enter the archives. So ultimately, that's what I think we run into here when we run into the party house. I think after all of this time, the archives have probably become sort of sacred to them. It's their only connection to the real world, which essentially no longer exists to them place where they can gather and experience their true life again, even if it is only 12 frames per second for half an hour on an old projector beneath a fake simulated earth. It's just kind of spiritual to them. And the final nail in the coffin, in my opinion, is the name of the song the inhabitants are playing when we find them. After listening to the Lost Reels soundtrack and Andrew Prollo's music, I can assure you that this is not a coincidence. The inhabitants are playing a song entitled Elegy of the Rings. It's essentially an ode to remembering their homeworld and the beautiful ring planet that hung in their skies. Sure, there's a simulated version of this ring planet, but notice they're inside of a building. They're not staring at the planet in the sky. It's only fitting they played this song and congregate before they enter the archives to experience their memories of a long lost world. And, you know, of course, they'd want to do this together and share that and not kind of do it one by one on their own. Let me know if you agree with me, or if you think something else is going on with our friends in the Shrouded Woodlands, who I've lovingly nicknamed the Cult of Cahoots. If you like the theory, consider subscribing to the channel. It really does help the channel grow, and it'll lead you to more content like this when I post. Plus, it really is a nice community to be in. As usual, a special thank you to the members here on this channel. I never really ask people to become members, but my heart gets a bit warmer every time someone decides they want to contribute to my small community here, so I genuinely, genuinely do appreciate it. As always, this is the Lore Explorer, diving deep into the lore so you don't have to. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.